afternoon to everyone. I hope everyone is doing really, really well on this Bank Holiday Monday. Welcome to my channel, guys, Joey Barnett TV. The weather's not too clever out at the minute, so in a way it's good for me because when the weather's bad like this, um, that means look, I'm indoors, working on my PC, writing my book, doing podcasts, and getting on with like the bits what need getting on with. When the sun's out, I'm out. It's one of them types of um, scenarios. But yeah, guys, I hope, I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's in the best of health. And um, I hope you're being the best version of yourself you could possibly be. Because that's the only way to be in this generation, guys. So, what I'm going to be talking about this afternoon is HMP Send. Now, what HMP Send was, was... A detention centre which had took over from the ball stalls. So it was around 19, in the early 80s um, when I first went to HMP Send. Now I have done quite a few videos on Send, but to me, there's not enough content on YouTube about these establishments, considering what we actually went through and what them hairy ass big screws put us through. You know, I was age 14, 14, I might have been 15, just turned 15, when I first went to HMP Send. I'd heard about it um, around my area from a, a few of the boys who have been there. And, you know, they, they tried to scaremonger you and, 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 and tell you that it was a really, really horrible place. And, you know, you, you, you got attacked in there by the officers and the... Um, the PE, physical education was very hard and bits like that. So yeah, um, before I actually went there, I was warned about this place. Um, but like everything, you don't take things seriously. One minute guys, I just need to have a drink. What I can say, uh, and this is not an opinion, this is a fact, that the youngsters of today would not have lasted back in the day in these prisons what I'm talking to you about they just wouldn't have lasted they would have either you know got extra remission when they attacked one of the screws um, there could be a number of things but what I'm saying is they're not though they're not cut out today like like how we've cut out years and years and years ago um, nowadays you've got CCTV you've got videos you've got cameras you know you've got inmates this you know, going on the phone trying to get officers like arrested just for you know closing the door, slamming the door on them or something like that. Back in my day, when um, you got Larry with a screw, especially in young offenders, that screw would actually take his uh, straps off of his shoulder and come into your cell and um, have a fight with you. And I, that happened to me quite a few times. It happened to me twice in the mound, which was a young offenders. What I done. Um, but yeah, talking about Sen now, we're three minutes in. So, first of all, when you first land in Sen, um, you've got to go into an induction wing. Um, so you're in a one-man cell um, while they monitor you and watch you for the first week. That's just to break you in and uh, to show you the ropes type of thing. But um, in my cell, as I looked out of my window, opposite me was a dormitory and I had a pal in the dormitory um, for my area which was really really handy for me and um, when I started shouting when I heard him talking out the window one, one night I quickly got to the window and went Darren Darren Bateman I, I hope you're doing well Darren I went Darren and he said he went not out to me be quiet and, and this was a, by night by now he was like a pretty hardened criminal out on the streets he had a big reputation he could really really hold his hands up and march on so for him to go like that to me um, meant something and I went what do you mean what do you mean and he said be quiet don't talk don't talk because of the screws and um, yeah I was warned about it by Darren um, straight away and that was the first first night I was in there so next morning the screws came to the uh, cell door and they said right um, you know you've got to go to work and they give me um, a bar about I don't know 10 inches long a brown bar and it was a soap bar and it's called a carbolic soap a bar of carbolic soap so they give me that and a little wooden um brush and i asked they asked me to follow them 
and they asked me to follow them up to a long corridor called the M1 and they give us um, kneeling pads and a mop uh, bucket, a metal mop bucket. We had to go in the recess, fill it up with hot water and literally we had to scrub the M1 on our hands and knees all day long. A few times a few officers went past me and um, if you didn't say excuse me every time an officer went past you, you know, you'd get a, you'd get a slap. They'd lift you up, um, tell you to get up off the floor, you know, and pin you up against a wall. One of them ones, you had to respect the officers um, because if you didn't, they learnt you how to respect them and they put the fear of God into you. It was very, very violent. Today, they could not get away with it. No way in this world. And I'm, I'm actually hearing through the grapevine um, that a few um, lads what was in send around my era have actually took um, the prison or a few of the officers or one of the officers to court um, over the abuse what we suffered and I got asked if that would be a bit of me because obviously it's not my previous convictions and I was in there and I said no um, because I'm not that type of person but yeah there is inmates what have actually arrested had um, officers arrested and, and um, got loads and loads of compensation for me that wasn't the way to go for me because um, for me, what it was all about was having that thought and that memory in my head, and I've still got it today, of how we were treated. Um, I was physically abused numerous times. It's six o'clock every single morning. When we, when um, I eventually come out of the um, single cells, I went up into the dormitory, um, and there was big, massive, long dormitories. And uh, I think there was like 20 beds on one side and 20 on the other side, and you had like a little window uh, by your bed uh, where you slept your head, the headboard, well it wasn't a headboard, it was a metal bar uh, strapped to the floor of the bed, but you know what I mean, there was a window behind us and um, and there was screws, uh, the night screw, one of them was called Chips, one of them was called um, Sweeney, there was a few night screws in there and what they used to do is they used to come to the uh, dormitory and they'd be just put their ear near the bars onto the dormitory and if they heard anyone talking they'd unlock the gate, they'd come onto the, onto the dormitory and this would be in the winter, you know, early hours in the morning, thick, thick snow outside, wind howling, and we're standing there in our pyjamas. They'd get all of us out of our bed. We had to stand at attention at the, at the, uh, the foot of our bed with our hands down by our side. Um, and while this screw comes screaming into the dormitory, shouting out who was talking, who was talking. Um, no one would, uh, would own up to it because, you know, we all knew what would happen. When you do own up to it, you're... Um, get taken off the dormitory on down to the corridor and you, you would literally get a good iron off of the screw so no one ever owned up to talking and what the screw would do then it would open all the windows up it'd open both gates up but obviously they're locked there's, there's, they're double gates it'd open uh, both gates up and um, it'd, it'd leave it open it could be three in the morning it could be four in the morning it'd leave it open until the, the day um, screws come on which was I don't know seven o'clock six o'clock something like that and um, we had to stand at the edges of our at the bed of our the footpost of our of our bed. We wasn't allowed to get back into bed. It was that it was that evil, this screw. But um, he wasn't the only one. Though. It was all like that. And and then at six o'clock in the morning, we was uh, woken up. Or if we wasn't in bed, we were standing at the foot of our bed. We was made to um, get into our gym clothing, which was a pair of shorts and we had to wear brown boots, steel toe cap boots, and a little blue vest. And uh, we was frog marched down to a, a big field, which led on to um, a load of polytunnels, greenhouses. Um, and some in inmates worked down there during the daytime as um, gardeners or landscape gardeners. That's why, that's what I've done in the end. But yeah, we'd get dragged onto this field, and it was, I don't know, probably the size of a football field and a half and we would, we would be made to run around five times around this, this field, uh, five laps. Despite how big you was, how unfit you was, you had to do these five laps and you had a screw on each corner watching you. And if you stop for a, a, um, a rest you, or you got a stitch or something like that, the screw would be running up to you, slapping you around the back of the head making you run, putting the fear of God into you, that to do, and you know, it was so, it was so um, sad for me, because there obviously was 
a few people there that was very unfit, um, fat, what was very couldn't run, and um, they really, really got physically abused by these officers. As luck had it, I was skinny then, and I was pretty fit, and I still am today, thank God. Um, but yeah, that was just the morning thing, and um, say seven o'clock we finished. We was then made to go back to the dormitory, um, get into our best clothes, and get ready for eight o'clock to go out onto the uh, exercise yard, which was um, called a parade. And um, we was mate, we was all st stood in the line. We was all um, told to stand to attention uh, while the prison governor, the screws, um, walked along the line and checked our shoes checked all of our clothing and checked every, everything. If we, if we even had as much of the hair on our boot, um, you'd get a slap around the face for that. You'd get set, sent back to the dormitory and you'd have to um, clean your boot off and come back and present yourself again. And it, it, if it happened again, you'd do the same again. But yeah, um, you know, that took hours and it was so humiliating what they put us through. It really was. Um, scared you know I was frightened out of my life this was just a few days after landing in there but yeah um the governor would do this and do, and, and do an inspection and then after that was made to go back to the um dormitory and then we was made to do bed packs so basically they run these places like the army and you had to uh, square all your sheets and your blankets off they all had to be the same um diameter the same thickness and you that you was made to um make a bed pack on top of your bed and put your pillow on top and then the screw would come around the governor or a PO would come around to each bed and he would inspect each bed if you had one crease out or one of the blankets was a little bit thicker or thinner or out of place than the other one he'd rip your whole bed off go around to all the others and come back to you again and, and check your bed again and you know you'd get an item for that too that was called a bed pack um, but yeah, this you know this is only seven eight o'clock in the morning, and then we was made to get this. I know you won't believe it. This is a dead honest truth. And then at nine o'clock, we was made to go to the gymnasium. So I've been reading comments um, under quite a f underneath these videos, these send videos, and there's quite a few of my followers of what have actually been in there send, and they can relate to what I'm saying to you because at nine o'clock was made to be a uh, to go into the gym. And uh, we was made to be made to uh, do things called medicine balls and, and benches. So basically, uh, these big leather medicine balls, we was laid out on the floor, and uh, we had to do sit ups with them. We had to do star star jumps with them. Uh, the screws would come along and smash the ball down onto your stomach to make sure you're um you know you're stern and and uh, you up you up to scratch um, and then you had these long benches you know like um, in a school say uh, at an assembly you had long wooden benches probably about 15 foot long um, and a couple of foot wide we was made um, to lay underneath these benches and we had to bench press these benches and then we was made to do circuits you know like 60 minute circuits and Again, I was fit, I did get through them, but yeah, I did fail a few times, and yeah, I did get a few right-handers, but um, I, again, I felt sorry for the people that was unfit. So yeah, uh, it was really a horrible, frightening place, and many, many, many people got um, really badly abused in there by these, uh, by these um, big area screws, you know. Um, so basically, what I'm trying to say to you guys is, you know, because I went to went to jail at a very young age and I got through sent after I come out of send I went to another one called Hasler which was in Portsmouth um, so yeah if you can get through them then by the time I went to adult prison a few years later I was I was completely at home in not an adult solely the young offenders you know because I knew that I'd been through a detention centre and this would be a walk in the park to me so it was like I was accustomed to it. Um, but this is what I'm saying to you. A lot of the youngsters of today wouldn't have lasted two minutes in their detention centres. And, and it was ag actually a few years later when they actually had to abolish them. And the reason why they had to abolish them was because of so many inmates' parents had put complaints in about these detention centres beating us kids up that they actually closed them down. So that's how, that's how brutal they was and that's how bad they was, guys. 
but yeah I'm gonna be doing a part two of this and um, I'll be letting you know what went on in the afternoons in the send and a few other bits but I'm gonna get this one uploaded I hope you enjoy my content every everyone and um, I hope everyone's having a great weekend happy Easter to everyone I'll see you guys in a bit peace